service here today on, uh, let's see, it's June 14th, so it's the first Sunday in Trinity. So glad to have you all. I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing, grant us your grace to keep your commandments, that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday after Trinity is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits in throne, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was. Our soul waits for 
the Lord. He is our help and our shield. The epistles from 1 John chapter 4. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. take refuge, save me from all my pursuers, and deliver me. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was, a, was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, Have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our common Christian faith together and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. You are surrounded by disease, chaos, riots, rebellion, oppression, and disorder. Now this has always, or nearly always, been true. As Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. Sometimes the dark reality is hiding under the cover of proprietary, or propriety, I should say, and decency. But the darkness is always there. If only you would look honestly at the world, you'd know it's not the paradise that you thought. If you take a serious assessment of your life, you'd see the darkness within. If you'd be realistic about your expectations, you'd stop living like you're going to live forever. But you're good at ignoring it, looking the other way, and putting all your effort into homes, barns, boats, clothing, food, and fun. Sometimes, though, reality bubbles up to the surface and makes itself known. Sometimes you know firsthand what life on this sphere hurtling through space can be like. Your sin makes itself known sometimes all too well. Its weight sticks to you like tar and feathers. Or perhaps you suffer. You can't shake the addiction. You can't break loose of the depression. No matter how hard you try, you can't do anything to improve your livelihood. Or maybe it's death for you that looms on the horizon. Your ticker just doesn't tick right. Your legs don't move like they used to. You seem constantly exhausted, and you don't know if you're going to make it to the end of this day or tomorrow. And so you have maybe both going on. You live blissfully ignorant of reality, living like you've got all the time in the world, but the dark reality is always there. You do a great job at avoiding it, but you really don't take care of it. You tackle the reality of sin and death like it's just another first world problem cured with first world solutions. Home improvement project, the wellness scheme, the extended vacation, or maybe just the new handbag, or if you're like me, a gadget, or maybe firearm, whatever, will gloss over the cracks that are widening. And this method, this strategy, it works until it doesn't. Sometimes life turns on a dime. The next moment you're facing sickness, despair, gloom, even death. And right now this great tsunami, tsunami of darkness is amplified by our news media and social media conspiracy theories. We're being told there's evil and it's everywhere, it's systematic. The politicians are crooked, the doctors are faking it, Technology wants to control you. The systems are inherently broken. There's threats. Threats of war from North Korea, China, Russia. And they're right at our doorstep. And there are those who are going to come after you, maybe today or tomorrow. And if, it do if they don't, well then it'll be cancer or COVID-19. Or maybe you'll lose your life, your liberty, and the happiness that you're entitled to as you are oppressed by totalitarianism, fascist rule. What are you supposed to do? But cower in fear, huddle in your bunker, and just hope for the best. The problem is, is that ignoring the signs of darkness or running from them, neither of this really does anything about sin and death, that darkness. That's because you can't cope with sin, you can't appease sin, you can't placate death. They're real enemies, and they need real answers. All the ugly, murderous blackness that surrounds you, or is even within you, is a sign of judgment. Everything your heart says isn't right in your life or in this world, well, it's telling the truth. That's sin. God's holy law written on your heart 
And God's holy law, proclaimed and revealed in his word, shows you who you really are, what this world is really like, and who your real enemies are. And the answer to the reality, that darkness doesn't come from within. Nothing you try to do is going to fix it. The answer only comes from God's word. Do you want to overcome that darkness that you struggle with? Do you want to be set free from this world's bondage and chains? Do you want to live and live abundantly? Jesus has a word for you today. Listen to Moses and the prophets. Listen to Jesus revealed in the Holy Scriptures. It's actually saying the same thing. Listen to Moses and the prophets. Moses saw Christ in the burning bush, in the glory cloud, the serpent on the pole, in the water that came from the rock. The prophets spoke of Christ, of his incarnation, of his suffering, his crucifixion, his death, his ascension, and his sitting at the right hand of the Father. Moses and the prophets, all scriptures, confess Christ Jesus, who is for you, given for you. So rather than ignore the darkness, Listen to Moses and the prophets. Jesus reveals sin for what it is. He unmasks the players working behind the scenes, that is death and the devil. And rather than leave you to suffer these things, sin and death, he goes into the darkness, into the ditch, dying for you and even descending for you into hell. He suffers all to overcome all that would keep you from God the Father. And rather than just leave you with your inadequate first world coping mechanisms of well wishes, your pursuit of happiness, your hope in earthly rule and law, Jesus comes and gives you abiding peace, joy, and love, steadfast love that no one can take from you. So in our gospel lesson, the difference between poor Lazarus and the rich man, it wasn't their stuff. I imagine that if the roles had been reversed and Lazarus was in the rich man's place, he'd be just as tempted to put his comfort, hope, and trust in his wealth. They're not different that way. Wealth is the great temptation, the root of all kinds of evil, Jesus says. And wealth often leads to misplaced loyalties and misplaced love. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom, Jesus says. But let's continue the thought experiment. What if the rich man were in Lazarus' shoes? Well, he'd be just as likely as anyone to despair and to have shame over his lot in life, whether it was a result of his own stupidity or it was done to him. There's a temptation in all of us to look at how well we are off or not, and to say "Hmm, that that has something to do with how God feels about us. It's really the same temptation, to trust in wealth or to despair when it isn't there. No, in the story, the rich man's lack of love is the only indication that really matters. Because his lack of love is an indication, as 1 John said, of a lack of faith in Christ. Listen to Moses and the prophets. Huh? But I'm wealthy. What do I need with them? So what? Are you a sinner? Are you just like poor Lazarus, barreling headlong into death? Does all of that money, that exercise, the diet, all of your living do anything about your dying? No. Only Jesus has the answer. Jesus revealed by Moses and the prophets. The difference between anyone isn't the good things or the bad things. The difference in the final estimation is between belief and unbelief. It's trust in Jesus for everything, not only for body, but for the soul. The rich man is so poor and deluded by his wealth that he neglects the riches and wisdom of God's holy word. Poor Lazarus is rich and wealthy, maybe not now in this life, but for the life to come, because he believes in Jesus who forgives his sins, who is overcoming his death, 
who's giving him resurrection and bringing him into his kingdom that never ends. So money, health, and prosperity, or poverty, sickness, and inequality isn't the point at all. Here, Moses and the prophets. That's the point. That is to say, receive Jesus. And by Jesus, you are sons of his kingdom forever. But not just then, but even now. Even today, at the Lord's table, everyone, whether they are poor Lazarus or the rich man, will be seated next to the king. Everyone receiving the same amount of forgiveness, life, and salvation from him. Everyone eating and being filled. Everyone receiving the truth about yourself, this evil world, and your need for Jesus. Every one of us is cared for and looked, looked after by our Savior. He cares about you all the time. And not just about you, but about all nations, all peoples, all languages, all tribes. He cares for all in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And that's what he gives to you at the supper. There is no distinction, not slave nor free, not Jew nor Gentile, not male nor female, all freely forgiven for Christ's sake. The rest of the world can go about thinking that they can solve their problems with wealth or with politics, that the corporations can straighten things out, let them make their money be their God in this world, but it won't do anything to overcome their death. Instead, you (laughs) have already received your reward, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for your salvation. Proof positive that God loves you, regardless of your station, your social class, your wealth or lack thereof. Because only Jesus is the way through, and he's the only light to the real present darkness. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. We stand to sing. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name would be hallowed by us and that all the world, through the pure and true teaching of your word and fervent love shown forth in our lives, would come to believe. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your son, by faith, that the number of Christians would be increased. Lord, in your mercy, 
Strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. And to your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, especially those who have requested our prayers, including Marcella, Jan, David, Carol, Brad, Janet, Barb, and Carol, Sandy, Linda, Joan, Ken, and Aaron, praying for them at all times that thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. And in thanksgiving, we rejoice this week in birthdays for Tyler, Natron, Nicholas, Kira, Alan, John, and Linda. For those who rejoice in their baptism, Elizabeth, Patrick, Ava, Malaya, Annika, Tom, Jerome, Eisen, Julie, and Chad. And those who rejoice in their, in their marriage, Ron and Joan, Ron and Janet, Jeff and Julie, Al and Jane, Ed and Bev. For all this, let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins also as we forgive those who sin against us, that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in, the good, in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world in its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our o Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul now and forever, as you have for your servants Brian Rush and Chris Lindau. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O oh Lord, in your great mercy to hear and to answer us. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly me, trite and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
You may be seated. A couple of announcements before you depart. So good to see you all here. Just a reminder, um, despite we're gathering together already, again, we still want to take proper precautions. Um, the virus is still out there. So we'll continue our communion practice as is. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I actually purify the chalice and my hands uh, after every side uh, with a cloth that's soaked in 190 proof alcohol. Uh, it's drinkable alcohol, but it's 190 proof. I don't know why anybody would drink 190 proof alcohol. Uh, anyway, so uh, I get to disinfect that for each thing. Also masks, if uh, you're feeling ill, wear a mask um, so that you don't share your, your uh, bugs with your neighbor and the six feet distance. All right, as best you can do here um, with our capacity. On the screen, yes, you see a couple announcements. One, we continue with the daily prayers each morning on YouTube and Facebook. If you don't have internet, then of course you can do the same on your own with the blue prayer sheet. All right, because you're back now, you can use these again um, as a family or as a household. Uh, also Wednesday Bible study, it's at 7.30, same place. All right, YouTube or Facebook. Um, also, thanks for the survey responses. Those were appreciated. Um, I helped give some direction. Maybe just a brief note is that Far and away majority of the people, all but one actually, uh, responded in Thanksgiving for all of um, this online resources. All right, so again, if you have opportunity to use those, they've been a blessing to those who can. Um, our equipment that we're using is somewhat dated, and today, for example, for whatever reason, it didn't connect to the server. It's automated, but there's no one up there pushing buttons. It saved it, so it'll be on Facebook or YouTube later today, but it, it wasn't streaming live, and part of the reason for that is the equipment we're using. So we'd like to make some improvements there, um, and I'll probably have more for you next week already. We'll talk to council on Thursday about what we want to do. Speaking of which, council is Thursday evening, 7 p.m., and then mark your calendars, because it's not on the insert yet. Um, we're still working out our bulletin format that we changed here. Um, voters' assembly on the 28th with social distancing, of course. So mark your calendar for that. All right, I think that's it. So Lord be with you all, we'll see you next week.